This video will walk you through the experience of a student completing an interactive video created through PlayPosit. The interactive video is called a bulb, and instructors at NC State can set it up by creating accounts through Moodle, then students access the bulb through Moodle. This particular bulb will demonstrate a variety of different interaction types. So as a student, I get started by clicking on the bulb inside my Moodle course. And I should see my name here at this top, and then I can click play to begin the bulb. So this particular video is currently playing inside the window of Moodle, but students can choose to make it full screen if they want so that they can see more of the video and more of the interactions. This particular video begins with a sidebar pause that has some directions for students. This is a PlayPosit pause interaction. Instructors can use this to provide directions to students or point out an important concept. Maybe they want to remind students to use the notes feature, which is here on the sidebar. Students can toggle between the interactions and this additional section, which has things like a transcript, a place for them to take time-stamped notes, and will also include a review at the end of all the questions and interactions that they answered. Pauses can also be in the form of a web embed with additional content from a website or a Google Doc that appears either here on the sidebar or across the entire screen. Pauses and other interactions can be set up so students earn points for completing them. Some instructors will require students to complete interactions before continuing on in the video. Others will allow for skipping and fast forwarding. As a student here now, I'll click continue so I can go on with this video presentation. So in college, I had to write a lot of papers. Now, when a normal student writes a paper, they might spread the work out a little like this. And I would want to do that, but then, then, then actually the paper would, would come along and then I would kind of do this. <laughs> now I had a hypothesis that the, the brains of procrastinators were actually different than the brains of other people. And to test this, I found an MRI lab that actually let me scan both my brain and the brain of a proven non-procrastinator. And, and so I could compare them. So here's the brain of a non -procrastinator. So here is my first multiple choice interaction set up by my instructor. Multiple choice questions can be added throughout the bulb. Sometimes your student response will provide feedback if an instructor has chosen to give feedback. And instructors can choose whether or not after this interaction pops up that a viewer, a student can rewind to find the answer. They can also choose multiple attempts. So here's a question based on the video section we just watched. What two types of brain scans are we about to see? So I will choose procrastinator and proven non-procrastinator and then submit. And I get a little correct feedback here um, congratulating me for how I paid attention. I'll click continue as a student to go on. Now, here's my brain. There is a difference. Both brains have a rational decision maker in them, but the procrastinator's brain also has an instant gratification monkey. Now, what is... So this question type or interaction type is check all that apply and is another question type you might see in a PlayPosit video. In this case, you have to check all the correct answers to get the question correct. So based on what we just watched, a procrastinator's brain has which of these two in it. So this time I'm going to pick joy-filled candy lover and rational decision maker. So now it's showing me the one that I missed, incorrect and correct. This is an example of one where I did not type in as an instructor specific feedback. This is just the default incorrect, missed, correct feedback from PlayPosit. And I see here that it was worth one point and I got zero out of one for this particular question. What does this mean for the procrastinator? Well, it means everything's fine until this happens. So the rational decision maker will make the rational decision to do something productive, but the monkey doesn't like that plan. So he actually takes the wheel and he says, actually, let's read the entire Wikipedia page of the Nancy Kerrigan, Tanya Hardy scandal, because I just remember that that happened. The instant gratification. So students can also be asked free response questions. These questions must be manually graded by an instructor 
or instructors can set the points to zero if they don't plan on giving a timely grade or timely feedback. When students are typing responses and instructors are creating questions, they can use the rich text editor to bold, italicize, add in links, add in pictures, record an audio clip, and more. So in this case, the question that would be given to students is to give an example of a time when you're more likely to be an instant gratification monkey and when you're more likely to be a rational decision maker. And I'll turn rich text on so that we can see that and I'll type when I'm cooking, I am a rational decision maker because I'm a big planner. And here's the example of when I could bold and I could also um, add an emoji and I could even do an audio clip or add images. Here it shows me a check, meaning that it actually took the response so I know I can continue and move on. The monkey does not seem like a guy you want behind the wheel. He lives entirely in the present moment. He has no memory of the past, no knowledge of the future, and he only cares about two things, easy and fun. Now, sometimes it makes sense to be doing things that are easy and fun, but other times it makes much more sense to be doing things that are harder and less pleasant for the sake of the big picture. So this is an example of a fill in the blank question. Fill in the blanks are based, can be based on the segment of the video we just watched or connecting back to something that happened in another class. The instant gratification monkey wants things to be easy and fun. And in this case, I can even, even see the responses right here on the screen. However, the rational decision maker is okay with things being harder for the sake of the big picture. The split between these experiences causes a, ooh, if I don't remember this, I'm going to type distraction. And then an instructor can also provide partial credit if I get some correct and some incorrect. So here's an example of that with the default feedback from PlayPosit, and I can see that I got two of the three possible points. And that's when we have a conflict. Turns out that the procrastinator has a guardian angel, someone called the panic monster. <laughs> now, the panic monster is dormant most of the time, but he suddenly wakes up. Anytime a deadline gets too close or there's danger of public embarrassment, a career disaster, or some other scary consequence. This is just an example of a reflective pause where I want, as an instructor, to add something that students might stop and think about. But there's a second kind of procrastination that happens in situations when there is no deadline. So if you want to have a career where you want to be a self-starter, something in the arts, something entrepreneurial, there's no deadlines on those things at first because nothing's happening at first, not until you've gone out and done the hard work to get some momentum, to get things going. There's also all kinds of important things outside of your career that don't involve any deadlines, like seeing your family or exercising and taking care of your health, working on your relationship or getting out of a relationship that isn't working. This is an example of one of the web embeds. Here is a image or a website that I wanted students to see and I decided that I wanted them to pay attention enough that I actually tried to make it cover more of the video so it would really draw their attention. It's also like a reflective pause, it's just a special type. So students will just click play when they're done looking at it. Now, if procrastinator's only mechanism of doing these hard things is the panic monster. That's a problem because in all of these non-deadline situations, the panic monster doesn't show up. And it's this long-term kind of procrastination that's much less visible and much less talked about than the funnier short-term deadline-based kind. So this is now starting a discussion board. So it pauses to begin with, but once I click play, what you'll see is that this interaction, which is a description of the discussion board, is going to stay on the screen for a little bit. And anytime I, as a student, start typing what I want to say related to this discussion topic, it will pause the video in order for me to make my comment. If multiple students were participating, I would see all of their comments that had popped up in the discussion forum and would also be able to reply to my peers. And it can be the source of a huge amount of long-term unhappiness. So that's an example where I just clicked to type. And so then I could type my response here. And again, if I had seen another res student's response, one of my peers in class, I could also reply to them. And regrets. I had a little bit of an epiphany. I don't think non-procrastinators exist. That's right. 
I think all of you are procrastinators. Now, you might not all be a mess, like some of us, and some of you may have a healthy relationship with deadlines. But remember, the monkey's sneakiest trick is when the deadlines aren't there. We need to think about what we're really procrastinating on, because everyone is procrastinating on something in life. That's a job for all of us, and it's a job that should probably start today. Well, maybe not today, but, you know, sometime soon. So here is a final question, which is a poll, and this interaction covers the entire screen. Previously in the video, when I showed the web embed of the graphic about tips to stop procrastinating, it covered part of the screen, and other times we had things just on the sidebar next to the video. Instructors can choose where an interaction is viewable on the screen. This particular type of interaction is a polling survey. Instructors can even assign points that are auto-graded for completion or participation in a poll, or they can make it a zero point interaction, but still pause the video and require students to participate before the video will continue. So in this case, it's rate your agreement with the statement that he made at the end, everyone is a procrastinator. So I'll click agree and then submit, continue, and we have very little left here. This was a final kind of question. And so now I get my review as a student, which lets me know that I completed the video, but that one of the nine interactions, which was our open-ended interaction, has to be graded by my instructor. And I can review and even jump back to all those sections of the video if I want to replay them where my instructor had put in the interactions. So again, this was just an example of how the interactions work in a PlayPosit bulb and how students access those through Moodle. So now I'm minimizing back out of my full screen. You'll see that I'm here in PlayPosit in, as a student, and now I can go back and do other work in Moodle or leave the Moodle altogether.